A few months ago, Cubite Interactive re-released both The Humans and The Immortal as the first in a line of old-school games that they're calling Cubite Classics. Fast forward six months and they're back with their newest release, Zero Tolerance. This Genesis first-person shooter was a technical marvel when it first came out and showed gamers everywhere that the 16-bit systems still had a little life left in them. It's definitely cool that this old-school oddity is finding a second life on PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X, and Switch, but is this game actually worth playing in 2022? To answer that question, I decided to flip through the pages of Electronic Gaming Monthly, Game Pro, Mean Machine Sega, and more classic magazines to see what the critics said back when Zero Tolerance first came out. Come, join me for another action-packed episode of Cubite Classics Review Crew. What's this magazine doing under your bed? Get that weed whack away from my door! That's string bean or baked bean? You expect to pass this class. Introducing the first Doom-like game for Sega. Zero tolerance. Because there's just way too much reality out there. An oil change and a free burger with cheese. Don't forget the ketchup. I want to take you back to 1994, a time when first-person shooters like Doom and Wolfenstein 3D were dominating the computer scene and 32-bit consoles were just around the corner. But uh, what if you were a Genesis owner who had no interest in upgrading to new hardware and still wanted to play the hottest new first-person shooters? Well, that's where Zero Tolerance comes in. Originally published by Accolade in 1994, this game proved that you don't need fancy Mode 7 effects to pull off a competent Doom clone on Sega's aging hardware. It may not have been pretty, and oh boy, you can definitely see the developers butting up against a lot of limitations. But this game was a solid choice for anybody who wanted to dip their toe in this emerging new genre. Now, when it came to the reviews, there was clearly a divide between people that appreciated the effort that went into making a cutting-edge game on this outdated hardware, and those who couldn't overlook the inherent limitations. Electronic Gaming Monthly's Ed praised the surprisingly smooth scrolling and great gameplay. Giving it a 9 out of 10, he said that the levels are huge and I like all the weapons you can pick up. Zero Tolerance is a fast-paced shooter that shines particularly well on the Sega Genesis. L, on the other hand, strongly disagreed. Giving it a 6 out of 10, he started off his review by noting the extreme ultra-violence. The gore, blood, and carnage throughout the levels is excellent. As a one-player game, it's great. I just didn't care for the two-player simultaneous game. Maybe it's because I want to do all the killing. The control also needs weeding out. Game Pro liked it even more than EGM, giving it a 4.5 out of 5. They explained that the game doles up pulse-pounding action thanks to the through-the-eyes perspective and speedy graphics. Despite minor flaws, Zero Tolerance provides deep-dish entertainment. The levels are large, with winding passages, ample confrontations, and loads of gameplay. Too few developers are thinking creatively like this, and too few games deliver the enjoyment Zero Tolerance serves up. Across the pond in the UK, Mean Machine Sega was also impressed with the game's innovation. At long last, some fresh gameplay. Mega Drive owners have been kept waiting quite long enough for this game format to hit the stores, and I'm glad to say that it's a pretty decent port. This is challenging stuff on the Mega Drive, and rather than try to tart up the graphics using loads of memory, they've concentrated on the gameplay. That said, not everybody was impressed as Mean Machines and Game Pro. For example, you saw video games, the Ultimate Gaming Magazine, give the first-person shooter a paltry 6 out of 10. Similarly, game players gave it a 65%, complaining that the graphics are below par, you never get to see the enemy faces. Furthermore, while the rocket launcher and flamethrower cause noticeable differences in carnage, all the projectile weapons cause the same simple hole-in-the-goblin effect. There was no difference between the shotgun and the pistol. Finally, the game lacked good ideas. Outside of the viewfinder that shows where you are, the rest of the screen is useless junk. Unfortunately, 
these are a lot of the problems that you're gonna run into when you attempt to play Zero Tolerance in 2022. While there is no doubt that it was technically impressive for a Genesis game, it feels like little more than a relic from the past today. Zero Tolerance is really only recommended to people who have nostalgia for this early first-person shooter. Hey, thanks for watching me talk about these Zero Tolerance reviews. For the record, the recently released Cubite Classics version comes with the original 1994 Genesis game, as well as Zero Tolerance Underground and the previously unreleased Zero Tolerance Beyond, which I believe was cancelled way back in the day. The whole collection is available now on modern consoles, so go and check it out, it's like 10 bucks. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is your favorite old school first person shooter? Are you partial to the original Doom? Maybe Hexen, one of the Duke Nukems? Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, we'll be back later this week with a brand new Nintendo Switch Online Review Crew episode featuring Pokemon Puzzle League. There's also a chance that we're going to see the PS Plus update this week. If that happens and they add more PlayStation 1 games, then expect full coverage next week. I don't know if I can get away with doing three of these episodes in a week. By the way, for that, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.